Another day, another, well, not so crappy car in this uh, case. This 911, it actually looks halfway decent. It was dropped off in this parking lot earlier by the transport driver and we couldn't get it to start, likely just because it's got a dead battery. Now, the funny thing about 911s is that they're simple cars. They're usually really reliable, but in my experience, they have one of the stupidest designs when it comes to getting in the front trunk, especially when your battery's dead. This very well could be the cheapest 997-911 and it's an S model uh, and there's one main reason, it's because it has super high miles but just at first glance the condition's really good but we've only spent about 38 seconds with it. So if this is similar to the way the 996 works, there's an electronic trunk latch. It's not mechanical. You don't just pull something under here and pop the hood, and under the hood is where the battery is located. No, since it's electronic, you gotta get power to the car, but if you can't get to the battery, how do you send power to the car? Let me show you. In the driver's side of the car, there's a fuse box under here, and in that fuse box is this little retracting post. That is a positive terminal. Now, there is not enough of a post there to actually be able to jumpstart this car with a jumper pack like we have here. This is strictly to get enough accessory power to the car in order to hit the trunk latch button that is located right here. Now it seems like I might be making a big deal out of this, but really, I'm not. Let me show you. We go, we hook this up, we'll turn on our jump pack here, make sure our terminals are nice and tight. Now you can hear clicking, all right? We got clicking, we got clicking, nothing. There's no popping, no action happening from the trunk. Now, let's double check here. Put the key in the ignition. You heard the ignition lock just opened up. So there's definitely power to the car somewhat, but when we hit this, it's dead. Then how the hell are we gonna get in the front trunk at this point? That's the question. There's gotta be a manual release cable somewhere. All right, I think we gotta take the front wheel off a Porsche. It's got a wheel key, doesn't it? Yeah. Yes, it does. Yeah, you know where that wheel key's located. Someone else's house. Oh, no? Is it, is well, it? I mean, it's gonna be in the front <laughs> trunk along with the accessory toolkit that's in the front trunk. This is ridiculous. Okay. Maybe we don't have to take this wheel off. Let's see. This is really turning into the abandoned Porsche rescue. So if that happens to be the title and the thumbnail, make sure you hit that like button because I didn't clickbait you. Everyone wants me to get a lift. They hate my Jack and Jack stands. But how do you bring a lift to an abandoned Porsche rescue? Yeah, and this keeps us in good shape. It you? does, look at this. This is my workout for the day. All right, that's about as much travel we're gonna get out of the wheel there. Can we turn this wheel? Look at that. That's good. Oh yeah, we got a lot of clearance in there. So, there should be a trunk release cable in the front end of that wheel well there. This is why Porsche owners buy their Porsches and when something breaks, they call the dealer. So the dealer can charge them. What, what does this cost? Just to get the liner off. Let me know if you work at the Porsche dealer. How much does this cost? What do you charge guys to just get the liner off to get into the trunk? Ugh. Ugh. One set of pliers away from maybe getting this thing open, maybe. Emergency release cable on this car is pathetic and I'll show it to you in a second, but I quickly ran home again to get a few tools and supplies and at this point I was lagging quite a bit and it's likely because I've had trouble sleeping lately and it's really catching up with me. So I took a quick second to myself, went online to helixsleep.com slash samcrack and took their sleep quiz. And just a few days later delivered direct to my doors my Helix Sleep mattress. I didn't have to go to the store, put it on the roof of my car and risk losing it on the highway on the way home. No, it is right here. What's really incredible is that there's a king size mattress in this box and what even might be more amazing is how they get it in there and how simple it really is to set up I've been sleeping in my new helix mattress for a little bit over a month now and it is a huge improvement over my old mattress it's not even really comparable this is their dusk Lux model which is made for people just like me that sleep on their back or their stomachs it's got that nice soft plush pillow top that just lets you sink in just a little bit before you feel that really great support and that's really what I didn't have in my old mattress was any support I found 
found myself tossing and turning a lot. Now I just lay in this bed and I fall asleep in record time. It is seriously that comfortable. That idea of going to a store and laying in a bed for one to two minutes that you'll have to live with for the next several years has been made obsolete by Helix, especially since they offer a hundred night sleep trial. If you don't love your Helix mattress, well, they'll come and pick it up from your doorstep. And each Helix mattress comes with a 10 year warranty. So you know you're getting something of quality that'll last a very long time. Head on over to helixsleep.com slash samcrack or click the link in the description. And when you use my link, you're gonna get up to $200 off your very own Helix sleep mattress and two free pillows, which in my opinion are just as comfortable as the mattress. Again, that's at helixsleep.com slash samcrack. And I gotta give Helix a huge thanks for giving me my best night's sleep in a long time and for sponsoring this video. All right, I'm on it. Okay. Come on. One, two, three. Oh, okay, that was too easy. Let me just show you what it actually looks like in here. Now on a normal car that has an emergency release, like my Audi R8 or like the Ferraris, there's actually loops around these little metal cords, these metal cords that are thin enough and they'll rip your hand apart like a razor blade because they're so thin. This is literally just a, a string. There's nothing, there's nothing to grab onto. So keep a set of spare pliers in your Porsche. Let's, let's get this thing running, man. I'm excited. Now I'm excited. You know, it's always like you get these cars and there's something that always stands in your way from the excitement. Look at that. There she is. This battery is from 2022. You know, when my friends Rich and Alex were in town and I pulled out my little portable toolkit that I use on pretty much everything. They made fun of me and they go, this is this guy's tools. He's literally working on these cars with a portable toolkit and on a jack stand. But these are the sort of guys that just call someone when they need help. Step your game up, Rich and Alex. Alex pretends like he worked at the Mercedes Benz dealer for like 20 years. We can't confirm that. That could be Russian disinformation as far as I know. Is that true? It's could probably be. true. I, I think it is. <laughs> Why? Because I said it? That's how, no, Russian, I just believe it. I can that's see how that. Russian disinformation works. Someone says it, and as long as you can believe it, because you're on, you know, at certain team, like you're on team Sam Crack, because you work for me. Yeah, but this is the yeah. truth. I caught you watching other YouTubers on the clock yesterday. And I'm, I'm gonna lucky. continue to do it too. I got, I had a board meeting with Rich and Alex actually. And I said, I, I saw Sage and he was watching his favorite YouTuber on the clock. I gotta keep out for the competition, you know? And then I go, who, what, you say, think like if they're hiring, you're gonna jump ship? Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know what they pay. Is that all this is about, Sage? There's no loyalty here? Oh, there's always loyalty, but okay, I have good. loyalty to money. You getting tired yet? <laughs> no, man. It's first thing in the morning. We got a Bentley to tend to today, and that's got way worse problems than this. Uh, but it's still like along the same lines of really stupid German car issues, even though it's an English car. It's got a lot of Volkswagen Audi uh, DNA to it. Now before we go and button all this up and try to start the car, I gotta know one thing. Does our new battery actuate the front trunk latch? Cause we don't wanna go through this again. Let's listen. Yes, yes. it does, okay. So if you have a super, super dead battery, you gotta do what we did. Spend two hours on a weekend morning that you have off from work to get your battery out. All right. My fingers are crossed that that was the easy part here because this car was as is at the local auction, which made it really cheap. But as we have figured out with as is, you could have a bad transmission, a bad engine. It's stuff that they really don't have to disclose. And I own the car. There's no way I can fight any sort of mechanical or really any major issue found with this car. My fingers are crossed that that was the easy part here. Easy part here. Sounds like a 911 to me. Couple lights on the dashboard, probably because our battery was dead. I don't think that's a big deal yet. Can't wait when they go 100 miles an hour in that gear. That's... Wow, dude. Feels really good here. Get over this way. Oh, she feels. 
feels good, doesn't she? I can't even believe it, man. Whoever owned this car before really, really did it justice. I mean, it's in like amazing shape and it drives. You never guess it would have that many miles on it. And it is a testament to Porsche that they put together one heck of a car. There's a plastic bag in the road. That's all we need is it's sticking. You ever had a plastic bag stick to your exhaust pipe before? No, but I hit a big bucket this morning. I'm like, wow. Yeah, that car's made for that sort It really of stuff. was. It didn't even hurt her. Was it a bucket of chicken? Here's what we want to do. Just coming off the heels of that nice Mustang that's in the process of getting painted, which had only, uh, what, had four out of the six gears. I want to kind of just roll through all the gears, make sure they're there, make sure none of the gears pop out. And we also want to listen to that engine. Pick a road that only requires, like, second and third gear. All right, here's second, third, Fourth, we gotta slow down. We got a 10 mile an hour curb coming up, unfortunately. Well, that gives me the ability to do this. Ooh, Sage, my God, look at how fast you can go through that corner. Yeah. I don't want to get it out of these gear stage, but look, there's sixth, all right? I'm accelerating in sixth. And here's fifth. I say we go straight to the convenience store and buy a lottery ticket at this point. I think that's not a bad idea. It's, it. it's really impressive, this car. Really, really impressive. Been a, it's been a long time since I've been uh, behind the wheel of a 911. And well, that was an old 996. And there are massive improvements in this car over the, uh, the 996, which makes me wonder what a new one feels like, but wow, wow. And it's it's why these cars have held their value and why they continue to go up in value. I feel like we're shooting like a one take right now. Like, can, can this guy just, can he just get over? Can he, can he get over maybe? Is he gonna let us over? Will he let us over? He's not letting us over. All right, we're gonna have to stop it right here. We're gonna create a gap and we'll, we'll get back to you in a minute. Only after about our first 10 minutes of driving the 911, the low coolant light came on. Admittedly, we were driving it pretty hard, so we took it straight home to investigate. All right, we're home. I'm gonna leave the engine running for a second. We are still dead in the center of the coolant gauge. So that's really, really good. You can see where the coolant is right here in the tank. And here's the minimum level right here. So we're definitely low, which leads the next question. Where's our leak at? Let's hope it's external somewhere here and not internal. Now at first glance in a coolant reservoir area, you can see white residue all around it and you can see a bunch of white residue at the end of the overflow tank's hose. That tells me that the coolant is rising. As it heats up, it expands and it's running right out. And one of the easiest tests we can do just to make sure our cooling system is airtight as intended is a quick pressure test. This air pump right here will attach to this little wedge that fits in the hole of the coolant overflow tank and it will send air all through the system. What that will do is put pressure on the existing water there and if there is an open area anywhere on the 911, well, it's gonna come gushing out and make it really apparent for us so we can fix that leak. The cooling system of this car runs the length of the car. So if you think about like a Mustang, it's got an engine just sitting in the front and your radiator's right in front of it. Well, our radiators are in the front grills of the Porsche and our tank is in the back, so there's actually hoses running the length of the car, so we gotta be pretty vigilant during this test. We're gonna look in the front, the underside, and the back here and see if we find any leaks. So there's a lot of that white residue in this area here. This is one of the coolant pipes. That actually looks like the thermostat housing area. Go ahead, Sage, pump it a little bit more. Get it up to about three quarters of a bar. Gotcha. I'm talking to you like I'm actually European and I know what sort of measurement bar is, but. So when I got my old 996 911, since it had some front end damage, uh, it actually went and broke the plastic radiator tanks on the side and it was gushing, cooling out. And that was made very obvious by our pressure test. But so far I don't see any drips. I don't see anything. So I'm stuck back on the theory of it probably being just the overflow tank cap. 
Now when I'm talking about the cap being bad, I'm literally talking about the overflow tank cap, this guy right here. You see there's a pressure valve in here, and that's supposed to regulate the pressure in your cooling system. If the valve fails or if the seal fails around it, well what's going to happen is, again, when your coolant expands, it's just going to rise. It's going to go right out of the overflow hose here. And again, we saw that white residue in this area. We saw it all underneath the engine in that same area. So it makes a lot of sense that this could be failed until you take a closer look at this cap and see that it ends in the number 04. Now on this 911, these caps were known to be a problem, but the earlier part numbers, the ones that end in like 01 or 02, were the problematic ones that would fail and then cause the car to overheat. Remember, our car isn't overheating, so it's just one of these really strange situations. Now to try and quickly rule out whether the cap works or not, we can go back to our pressure tester here. We're gonna leave this car under pressure. This kit uses its own cap. It does not use the factory cap. So if we hold this pressure over say like 30 minutes or an hour, we can pretty much point specifically to our cap. If it does not hold pressure, that means that we do have a leak somewhere in the system. And, uh, well, that's not a good sign at this point. However, there's a bunch of under trays on this car. So if the pressure does go down, we'll just pull into the barn, start pulling the under trays and see if the leak is under there where we didn't see it before. This is after 40 minutes. We are slightly lower. We're definitely touching the notch on the number one here. And now it is down just a little bit. So something is letting out a very slight amount of air. At this point, things are just so strange. The car sounds healthy, it drives well, and not even a smidge of overheating. I can't imagine a car that's running this well has a blown head gasket. So the next quick thing I did was pull the coolant cap and start the car. We watched very carefully to see if any bubbles rose out of the coolant. That would be an obvious sign that we have exhaust gases entering our cooling system. And nothing, the water in this tank is as still as could be. Now on all the Porsche cars I've worked on, there's a bleeder valve connected to the top of the coolant tank and it has a seal inside that could have failed and essentially have the same symptoms as a failed coolant cap so I put some soapy water around this valve we started the car let it run a little bit if air was escaping a failed seal here you would see that soapy water bubble up and absolutely nothing and so we're at another dead end now cooling system diagnosis should be pretty straightforward, but it's easy to second guess your work when you're getting a lot of mixed signals, like we are with this Porsche. Let's keep in mind our clues and keep things simple. First off, there's coolant splatter all on the driver's side of the engine bay of the car, top to bottom. Second, when I park the car, I top off the overflow tank with water, and even on short drives, that level goes down, which makes it obvious we are definitely losing fluid. To make sure I'm not missing an obvious leak, we parked it on a hard surface, took off the splash shields where the radiator hoses run, ran the car and pressure tested it and still found nothing. We even removed the air intake box to get a clear look at the engine bay and inspect the water pump to make sure it hadn't failed and still no signs of a leak. We then hooked up a soda can in the engine bay of the car and drove to see if maybe our tank was overflowing and the hot engine would turn the water into steam before it could hit the ground. I drove it another five miles or so and my coolant level had definitely fallen and none of that missing fluid made its way into the can. With all the testing we've done so far, we've lost a sizable amount of fluid. Fluid I haven't found yet. And really the only place we haven't looked is inside the crankcase. A textbook sign of a blown head gasket is coolant mixing with your oil, making that milky oil that you never ever want to find. And unfortunately, this car doesn't have a dipstick otherwise we would have pulled it a long time ago they did away with it on these modern Porsches and now it's all done through the dashboard the only way to really check the oil is to pull the drain plug and drop a little bit but we can also check the bottom of the oil cap because sometimes you'll see a milky underside if you do have that blown head gasket all right here's where the oil goes in is that a little bit of a funny business right there or is that just crankcase vapor <laughs> right here I'm starting to see some uh, that looks good to me. Right? Yeah, I think it looks like oil. Yeah. Why does it always have to come to this? A block tester. Since we've got a coolant leak somewhere and we can't find that coolant, well, there's only one other place could be going in my mind at this point. It's internally, but we've got clean engine oil. This just doesn't make any sense. This is very similar to the BMW i8, but it's even better because this car is not overheated not once. It's never gone over the center mark, 175 degrees, not once. Even sitting in traffic where you'd be prone to overheating. So if you've seen my channel before, you know how this works. You put this purple fluid in this bulb here and you aerate it. If it turns green or yellow, that means we've got exhaust gases present in the cooling system. System, which means we have a breach probably in the head gasket. Let's cross our fingers on this one, but every time we've got a car delivered from auction with low coolant, we've had pretty consistent results here, and they're the bad sort of consistent results. 
Right, we got to do this on a warm car and I did just drive it so it is warmed up hopefully our thermostat starts cycling I've already bled all the pressure out of the system as well so this should tell us within literally a few seconds what we've got going on Let me make sure I'm not... you can see the color pretty well see yeah it's green now oh my god it turned in yeah well, string of my cock and call me O'Henry. That sure wasn't supposed to happen.